like to give a brief introduction of Vero uh, Wilson. Uh, Ajahn Martin Yadam has lived as a Buddhist forest monk in the jungles of Thailand for 20 years. Okay. In the Thai forest tradition founded by the late Wong Fu Man. He was ordained in 1995 under the guidance of the Wong Tha Maha for many years. So I think all of us are eagerly waiting for Vero uh, to actually uh, give us a Dhamma talk. So uh, without much delay, I would like to invite Professor to give his talk. Thank you. All your people have to sit on chairs, huh? <laughs> I see young people sitting on chairs, huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? What is it? Huh? <clears throat> I mean, this is not a Dhamma class, yeah? <laughs> <City. laughs> ah, what is what is wrong with Malaysia, huh? You're born in the wrong place. No? You understand English? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, just wonder, just have to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> Where are we born? Why? Why? <laughs> huh? And why are we born in Malaysia? Kama. Kama. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and what kind of karma leads us to a birth in Malaysia? Oh. <laughs> what is the good? No war. Born as a human being. No war. Born as a human being. Peaceful country. Yeah. And the bad karma? We have a corrupted officers. <laughs> what? Corruption. Corruption. No, no, no. Disrespect. Disrespect for the Dhamma. <clears throat> no? <clears throat> no? Otherwise, you would have been in, born in Thailand or in Laos or in Kampuchea, yeah? where there's a Buddhist country. You're born in a Muslim country? Yes. So? <laughs> no, we're still able to practice the Dhamma. What? We're still able to practice the Dhamma. You're still allowed. able. Yeah. We're still allowed, <clears throat> and uh, we have a, a, a new uh, building here for us to practice Dhamma. Yes. Dhamma. <clears throat> we're happy what we have. Yeah. We're happy what we have. Yes. We're contented. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have the teachers. Yes. You have a nice place, yeah? We have yeah? a good teacher in front of us So now. we invite the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> we have freedom to choose the teacher. Huh? Huh? How do you know this is a good teacher? Huh? Huh? <laughs> you don't know? Huh? <clears throat> See the Malaysians, yeah? No respect for the Dharma. They don't know what, what is the proper time to come to a Dharma talk. Yeah? <laughs> Whenever in Malaysia, you know, the people come late, yeah? Yeah? <laughs> they never come. Yeah, Malaysian time, yeah? <laughs> but the teacher doesn't know Malaysian time, yeah? <laughs> the teacher has to wait for the students to come. That is, that is disrespectful for the Dhamma, yeah? Mm, understand it next time you come on time, yeah? <clears throat> Yeah, what is? You still you still don't have yeah. <laughs> this this Dhamma Hall, this this new building is so brand new that nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> you have such a nice Dhamma Hall and you can't use it. <laughs> so the question is why are we born, huh? 
Yes. <laughs> and why do we die? To be born. <laughs> huh? that's, that's, a good, that's a good answer. We are born to die. Everybody has to die, yeah? Sooner or later, yeah? Some, some of us sooner, yeah? Huh? What kind of work are we doing in order to, to have a better life? Huh? What are we doing? Yeah. In the morning we get up, then we eat something, then we work, and then yeah, we eat something more. Huh? Then we play around, then we eat something and go to sleep. Huh? No? Yeah. 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 Yes. Pretty much our life every day. Yeah. <clears throat> or you can put it even more simple. Yeah. We get up. Yeah. We eat. We do something. We eat. We do something again, and then we go to sleep, yeah? And that, since the time we are born, to the day we die. Huh? Yeah, get it, yeah? I'm not joking, yeah? This is, our, this is what we call life, yeah? <clears throat> but nowadays, the young generation, their life is already in the smartphone, Yeah? yeah? <laughs> You know what smartphone is? <laughs> All our memories are in the smartphone. Even the calculator is in the smartphone. We don't need our brain anymore. Huh? Because we have that, the brain outside of us. Yeah? <laughs> when that brain is lost, you know, everything of our life is lost. <laughs> We drop it in the water and all our life is lost, yeah? <clears throat> so the essence of it, you know, is make something useful for, for your life, yeah? The next life is coming, yeah? But what do you think the next life is, yeah? What did the Lord Buddha say, yeah? A human life is very difficult to obtain, yeah? And when we have a human life, yeah, to meet the true Dhamma is very difficult to obtain. Yeah? And when we have a human life and meet the true Dhamma to meet the Buddha or to meet an Arahant is very difficult to obtain. Yeah? So lots of people in Thailand have met Arahants. There were so many Arahants. Yeah? Why do you think Thailand had so many Arahants? You know that in Thailand there are probably over 100 Arahants. That's a lot for a country. Yeah? It's the richest country in the world, yeah? Because there was the true Dhamma. Yeah? And the Lord Buddha said, wherever there is the true Dhamma, there's the Sotapan, there's the Sakadakami, there's the Anakami, and there's the Arahant. Yeah? <clears throat> now let's have a look at Malaysia. How many Arahants are here? <laughs> <clears throat> Just like in Germany, yeah, where I come from, yeah, there are no Arahants and there is no true Dhamma, yeah. <clears throat> so it's very difficult to find the true Dhamma. Yeah? Most of the people, yeah, have to go, you know, go to find the masters in Thailand. But even now, they are nearly all dead, yeah. They are not anymore, yeah. They are, they are hardly any more alive, yeah. So it is even more it is even more difficult now in Thailand to find a true master to teach you, yeah. And what should he teach us? The way out. Huh? You don't have dukkha. Huh? The way out of dukkha. Huh? You know dukkha? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Every day. Every day. It already starts in the morning. We don't want to get up. We don't want to crawl out of our bed. That's already dukkha. Yeah? When we are hungry, it's dukkha. Yeah? We are thirsty, it is dukkha. <clears throat> See how respectful the Malaysians are? <laughs> coming in, coming out, going in, going out. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> Bad excuse. <laughs> no 
I mean, that the, the room is so little, we really don't need sound, huh? You all understand me, huh? Yeah? Yeah. yeah? Why, why, why do we need sound machine? <laughs> <laughs> At least my, my voice is still loud enough, you know, so that, that the few people, you know, here are hearing it, yeah? <clears throat> Malaysia is a big country, huh? Not so no, 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 small. Small? small? How many how many people are living in Malaysia? Thirty million. Thirty million. Thirty. Oh, that's not so big. Thailand is bigger. <laughs> But Singapore is smaller. <laughs> so we are hungry. That's Dukkha. Yeah? No? Yeah? Yeah? We are thirsty, that's dukkha. Yeah? That's just the dukkha of the body. We are sleepy or tired, that's dukkha. Yeah? And when we need to, do, to go to the toilet, that is also dukkha. Yeah? And the only thing that we know is yeah, the way, you know, to avoid the dukkha. So when we are hungry, we eat. Yeah? When we are sleepy, we go to bed. Yeah? Huh? When we need to the go toilet, we relieve ourselves, yeah? Ah, that's so nice. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But we don't know what the way out of Dukkha, yeah? Because we really don't understand Dukkha, and we don't have the motivation to get out of the Dukkha, yeah? We just want to, you know, we just want to play around with our smartphones or, or kill the time. Isn't that what we're doing? Watching TV, yeah? Looking at our smartphone, yeah? It's there on the lap, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we want to know, you know, we look it up, yeah? yeah? <clears throat> Why do we want to know things, yeah? Why do, we, why do we think we have to kill the time that we have, yeah? Just waiting to die, oh? Yeah? We can't wait to die. That's why we kill time. Hmm? We don't make useful things with our lives, yeah? yeah? What is useful things, yeah? I mean, for instance, making bun, yeah? Making merit, yeah? Hmm? <clears throat> That would be useful. But the most useful thing is, you know, to keep the five precepts, yeah? You remember? You, you know the five precepts? Yes? What is it? Not harming any living being. Not just killing, yeah? Not taking what is not given. Oh, that's already more difficult, yeah? We go to work, you know, and we take this and we take that, you know, that's actually not ours, yeah? Even if it's just a pencil, you know? <laughs> or a paper or a block of paper, yeah? That is not given, yeah? It's stealing, actually, yeah? <laughs> <clears throat> taken what is not given, yeah? And then, no sexual misconduct, yeah? yeah? A partner who has, yeah? a husband who has a wife, yeah, is faithful, a wife who has a husband is faithful, yeah? Not going outside of the marriage, yeah? Not having a little husband, yeah? <laughs> Or having a little wife, yeah? Or having many little wives, yeah? <laughs> yeah? That is all sexual misconduct, yeah? Sexual misconduct is also, you know, somebody who is depend having sex with somebody who is dependent on us, yeah? Like, <clears throat> like parents and children, like a teacher and student, yeah? Or professor and student, yeah? That's all sexual misconduct, yeah? Or, yeah, being, being the CEO of a company and, and having sex with the secretaries or with the, with the underlings, yeah? That's sexual misconduct, yeah? And when you look at the world, what do you think? Yeah, number one crime, sexual misconduct. Yeah, everybody does it. Yeah, because everybody does it, we think it is okay. Hmm? Yeah, and because every everybody does it, we also do it. Yeah, yeah? and where do we go? Down. Hell. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, now put this microphone away if it doesn't work, yeah, because it is hitting my face. Eh? <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> so, 
And then, yeah, uh, what is the fourth one? Hmm? False speech, no, harsh speech, yeah, huh? lies, yeah, deceiving speech, yeah. We do that all day, every day. Yeah. Look at this person, yeah. Huh? What is he doing? What is he doing? Look at him, yeah. He's doing something wrong. He's doing something wrong. He's doing something wrong. Yeah? So why don't we look at ourselves? Huh? Other people say the same thing about us, huh? Huh? Do we like to hear that? No. So why do we do it? Huh? <laughs> huh? Because we are so accustomed to it. Huh? Because we are so programmed to do it. Huh? We hate ourselves or we hate other people. We don't like ourselves. Do we? Huh? Not really. And because we don't like ourselves, you know, we have to blame other people for our own faults. Huh? You don't see it yet. Yeah? <clears throat> so, I mean, lies, yeah? harmful speech, yeah? deceiving speech, yeah? and speech that hurts other people. Yeah? That's all the fourth precept. And the fifth, no alcohol, no drugs, everything that makes us unmindful. Yeah? So, do we drink alcohol? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah? Why? Why do we drink alcohol? Why do we take drugs? Dukkha. The first noble truth. Huh? No? No? Huh? Think about it. So if you keep the five precepts, what, what did the Lord Buddha say? If you keep the five precepts, we can come back as human beings. Yeah? If you don't keep them, we go, go down to the lower realms. Yeah? <clears throat> and the lower realms are, are the animal realms, the ghost realms, yeah? the demon realms, and the hell realms. Yeah? And most of us go to the hell. And we all have been there, including Lung Po. He has been there so many times, he doesn't, doesn't even want to remember how many times. Yeah? That's, what we, that's what we normally do. Yeah? Because we don't keep the precepts all the time. Yeah? We keep them, and we, we don't keep them, we keep them, we don't keep them, we keep them, we don't keep them. Yeah? And uh, the Venerable Ananda, I mean, if you heard it, you know, I asked one time the Lord Buddha, how many people are going to hell? What do you think? How many people are going to heaven? Have you heard that before? No? Do you see that bull over there? How many horns does he have? These are the people who go to heaven on Iban. Yeah? How many hairs does he have on his fur? These are the people who go to hell. Lots. Huh? Many, 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 many. many. Yeah. So, I mean, keep the five precepts. That's it. Yeah? From now on, yeah? And don't eat something, please. Huh? I mean, <laughs> it's amazing, you know? Yeah? That's why you're born in Malaysia, and then next time you're probably... <laughs> next time you're probably born in Africa, and, you know? And <laughs> can't, can't we sit still, you know? I mean, for half an hour to listen to the Dhamma without doing anything? Is it so difficult? Yeah. Huh? <clears throat> I mean, in, in Singapore, the Singapores all have their bottles of water with them, you know, and then start to drink. <laughs> Here in Malaysia, they start to eat. <laughs> oh. uh, we just talked about hell. You like to go? <laughs> Oh, too many people, yeah? I mean, we know it, you know? I mean, we don't believe it really, you know, that we go to hell. Nobody of us, oh, is anybody, yeah? Believing that he, you know, when he dies now and that he goes to hell? Mm, no. But we do know, you know, when we don't keep the, yeah? When we don't keep the Malaysian laws, that we go to prison, no? 
Yes, we know. That's why we are careful not to break them, huh? Because we don't want to go to prison. Yeah? But with the five precepts, you know, I mean, there's actually, you know, there's no police hunting us down. Yeah? <laughs> oh, you broke this precept. Oh, you broke this precept. Yeah? No, that will come at the end of our life. Yeah? The moment we are dead, you know, then, then the police is coming, you know, and dragging us to hell. Yeah? And then they read all the things that we've done. Oh, most of the things that we don't even remember <laughs> anymore. Yeah? So keep the five precepts. That's all what I want to say with that. Yeah? From now on, yeah? <clears throat> what you've done in the past will come back to you. Yeah? That's the law of karma. Yeah? Whatever we have done, you know, will come back to us. Yeah? And... Whatever comes back to us now is what we have done. Isn't that? Huh? Yes. Yeah, but it's difficult to accept. Huh? When the hardship comes, you know, huh? <clears throat> when our husband becomes unfaithful, yeah? Maybe we have been unfaithful in our last life, our previous lives, huh? No? Yeah? Only things happen, you know. Karma is very just, yeah? It seems unfair to us because we don't remember our past lives. We don't remember what we have done in our previous lives, yeah? That's why it seems unfair, yeah? But it is really just, yeah? Only the things come back to you that you have done, yeah? That's why we have the saying, don't do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. For, what, for whatever happening to you right now is what you have done unto others. So, welcome it, you know, and get over with it, yeah? Even if you don't like it, yeah? If you don't like it, you know, try to smile, you know, and bite your teeth, yeah? Just like you give birth to children, you know, you also bite your teeth. <laughs> But then, you know, when it's over, you know, you're happy, yeah? And that's the same thing. When bad karma comes, you know, and, and we accept it as it is, yeah? When it's over, we're also happy, yeah? So accept the karma that is coming your way, yeah? Don't, don't try to fight it, because the moment you fight it, it comes back stronger and stronger and stronger until you can't fight it anymore. Yeah? And that most of the time this is hell, you know, when you can't fight it. Yeah? No, you just have to experience it. Yeah? Hell is the only place where we can't do any more karma. Yeah? That's where we experience all our bad karma. Ghost realm, we can still do bad karma. Yeah? De even in the deva, in the heavenly realm, we can do, do bad karma. But the most bad karma huh? and the most good karma we can de do here on this human realm. Huh? So use your time wisely. Yeah? Don't just kill the time. Yeah? <clears throat> When you have time, you know, use it. You know, helping people. Yeah. Helping your, your grandchildren is good karma. Helping, you know, uh, <clears throat> bringing up children is good karma. Yeah? Helping your parents is extremely good karma. Yeah? Looking after your parents. Yeah? <clears throat> There are a lot of the good things that we can do. Yeah? It's not only, you know, connected with the monks. Yeah? Yeah? Look after, you know, look after the poor people. You know, look after the... People who are in need or who are in dire, yeah, dire straits, yeah, <clears throat> look after them, you know, it's all good karma, yeah. And there are so many, you know, in Malaysia, there's so many things we could do, yeah, help other people, yeah. <clears throat> Malaysia is not a very rich country, yeah. So there are many poor people, you know, and there are many people in need, yeah, so we can help them, yeah, and that is also good karma, yeah. Of course, you know, being generous is very good karma, yeah? Being generous, being respectful, yeah? It's also good karma, yeah? It's a virtue that we actually need when we want to go the path, yeah? When we want to find the path out, to, to, out of Dukkha, yeah? And gratitude, being grateful for what is given to us, yeah? Being grateful for our parents, what they have done to us, yeah? I look at many, many children, you know, I mean, who, who, are, in a, who are in a foster home, yeah, where the, where the parents just, you know, throw them out, you know, with half a year, you know, with a year, yeah. So we should be grateful, yeah. We should even be grateful, you know, if somebody gives us work, yeah. Or grateful, you know, if somebody gives us money for the work that we do, <laughs> yeah. 
or if somebody rents us a house, yeah, or sells us a house, yeah, all th- all so many little things that we can be grateful for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just wonder where you are going to be born next life. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> now you have the chance, you know, to listen to the mind. You come too late, yeah. <clears throat> So there are a lot of things, yeah. Actually, you know, when we when we start to practice, you, we need these three virtues, yeah. A monk certainly needs these three virtues, otherwise he can't become a monk, yeah, or a nun, yeah. <clears throat> he needs generosity, otherwise he won't get any food when he goes on Bindapad, yeah. <laughs> he will give up monkhood very quickly <laughs> after a few days, yeah. <clears throat> So we need generosity, we need gratitude, and we need respect, yeah? I mean, when you look at Thailand, it is a very respectful country, yeah? <clears throat> so it's all there, yeah? yeah? So prop up a little bit, yeah? yeah? Your virtues, yeah? <clears throat> and then start to, to meditate, yeah? Start to practice, yeah? What else do you have to do, yeah? Constantly playing around with this, playing around with that, yeah? Like you said, you know, I mean, we are born to die, you know, running, yeah. Next time, you know, you go to a pet shop, you know, look at a hamster, yeah, in a hamster wheel. That's us. Running, 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 not going anywhere, yeah. Going up, going down, going up, going down, going up, going down, yeah. Hmm? Just like my master said when he looked at some of his lives, yeah, going up to this kind of heaven, then going down to that kind of hell, going up to that kind of heaven, going down to this kind of hell, before he actually, you know, became back as a human being, yeah? <clears throat> Different kinds of karma have to be, you know, to, you have to bear them in different kinds of hells or in different kinds of heavens, yeah? Yeah, there are 25 realms of heaven, yeah? where we can go, yeah? But not, you yeah, know, this karma leads us to this heaven, that karma leads us to that heaven, this karma leads us to this hell, and that karma leads us to that hell, yeah? And for people who drink alcohol, you know, they are led to, to this kind of hell where they have to drink hot iron, yeah? And that is very pleasant, yeah? yeah? Never tried that, yeah? <laughs> Next time when you drink alcohol, you know, think about it, yeah? If you want to drink hot iron, yeah? Down in hell. People who kill, you know, go to a certain kind of hell. Yeah, people who steal are going to go to a certain kind of hell. Yeah, <clears throat> when you pass your sentence there, then you go to the next realm of hell. Yeah, if you don't have any heavenly realms. Yeah, so that's why we're running, 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 not going anywhere. Because I mean, all what we can do is, you know, run around in these thirty-one realms of existence. Yeah, if you like it, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. put some. Put some curtains in the hamster wheel, yeah? Put some nice paintings, yeah? Maybe a TV set, yeah? Maybe your MP3 player or your smartphone, yeah? And then, you know, just stay in this hamster wheel, yeah? It's not, you know, it's not for everyone, you know? I mean, if people, as long as people think, you know, this life is kind of fun, you know, I mean, just go ahead, yeah? Just don't do the things that lead you down, yeah? Because you don't like it. Uh, Please put your head off, yeah? It is, uh, it is really disrespectful to listen. Uh, yeah, then sit somewhere else. Huh? I mean, I, I'm not allowed, actually. I'm not allowed as a monk to, 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 to preach Dhamma to somebody or to teach Dhamma to somebody who has a hat on or who, or who stands above me. Yeah? Okay? Understood? <clears throat> Just sit somewhere else. You know, I'm in the air condition here. Yeah? No, when, when you sit over there, yeah. I mean, even, even the Lumpoy, you know, I mean, he, he has a bold head, yeah? yeah? <laughs> That's what we have to take up with, yeah? <clears throat> I just show you, you know, I just want to teach you, you know, <clears throat> the different kinds, yeah, of ways that you can choose, yeah? If you want to stay in the hamster wheel, at least make it a nice hamster wheel, yeah? Huh? 
And remember, you know, whatever you plant in this life, that's what you're going to harvest in the next life. Yeah? Not in this life. Yeah? Lots of people, you know, go to the monastery making pun, you know, and then on the way out they say, yeah, they, they, uh, they buy a lottery ticket, yeah? Ask a farmer, yeah, if he plants, plants rice today, if he can eat it tomorrow. Or uh, even after planting, yeah. No, he has to wait six months, yeah. Huh? And we have to wait at least 60 years for, for some of the kama to ripen. For other kama, you know, we have to wait, you know, even lifetimes, yeah. But then he comes back every, every lifetime, yeah. Just like an, we plant an apple tree, we have to wait for seven years, you know, for bearing fruit the first time, yeah? But then for 20 years, you know, every year, every year it bears fruit, yeah? And that's the certain kind of karma, you know, I mean, that takes a long time to ripe. But when it's ripe, you know, I mean, it comes every life, every life, every life, every life, yeah? Uh, just, just, just know, you know? Uh, just know the way you're going, yeah? Just like when you when you go, you know, in the city, you know, when you go back to your home, yeah, you know which way to go, yeah. <clears throat> so when you do good, you know you will receive good, yeah. But if you don't keep the uh, don't keep the five precepts, you will go down. Huh? You don't believe in hell, huh? You don't want to, yeah. But there's, there's no way out, yeah? I mean, it's just the same, yeah? And it's just the same as with the law. If you break the law, you go to prison. Yeah? So if you break the precepts, you go to hell. Yeah? That's what, what it is all about, yeah? <clears throat> so I, if people, you know, want to stay, you know, want to stay in, in the hamster wheel and find it fun, yeah? No, it's okay. It's okay with me. It's your life. You, you bear the responsibility for it, yeah? But at least make it nice, yeah. Plant all the things that you want to get, yeah. There's nothing free in this world. Yeah? Whatever we want, we have to give first. Tough life, huh? <laughs> when we want to receive love, you know, we have to love people, yeah. When we want to receive respect, we have to respect people, yeah. When we want to be in power, yeah, we want to... We have to serve other people. No? Yes. We have to give first before we can receive. Yeah? Okay, understood. Yeah? If you want to become rich, yeah, you have to be generous. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? And if you want to become beautiful or handsome, you know, we have to serve. You know, we don't think about ourselves. We only think about other people. Yeah? Actually, it is in one of the suttas, you know. I mean, a lot Buddha talks about it. But I think he talks only one time, yeah? <clears throat> so he mentions it, yeah? So, I mean, remember it, because that's, yeah? Buddhism is a very logical, very rational, you know? It's, it's actually the only religion in this whole world, yeah? Religion in a true sense, yeah? Because religere, yeah, I mean, it's a Latin word, means to point back at oneself, Yeah? Not to point to a god or to Allah or to Hindu or these gods, yeah? No, it points back to oneself, yeah? And that's the true meaning of religion, yeah? Finding the way back to our own, own heart, yeah? Huh? And where is your heart? Have you found it? What, 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 do, you, what do we call our heart normally, huh? What do you think our heart is? This emotion, that emotion, huh? this feeling, that feeling, that's what we call our heart, isn't it? The emotional heart. Yeah? These are just emotions. This is just one of the khandas, Yeah. What is the heart? Yeah. It's a strange thing, yeah? Huh? It it's resides in there, yeah? And when we are born, what does this heart do? Yeah? Or call it chitta, you know, I mean, it, maybe it is better. Yeah? Call it chitta. Yeah? What does the chitta do when a newborn baby is born? It starts to program this body. No? Starts to move. Yeah, starts, you know, and then after it can move, you know, the hands and the feet. Yeah? Uh, then it learns to walk. Yeah? And then it learns to talk. Yeah? 
and then it learns to think, yeah? And when are we finished with the programming? 15, 16 years, yeah? That's about it, yeah? And then how many years do we have, yeah? Where we have full strength, 30 years? About this, yeah? 15 years to program this body, to be able to use it in full strength, yeah? Then being able to use it in full strength in, for 30 years, and then we die, when, then we wait for death for 40 years or 50 years. <laughs> Ask yourself, you know, I mean, think about it, you know, think about the reality of life, because that is the reality of life, yeah? Hmm? Think about it, yeah? We program it for 15 years, we can use it full strength, most of us, yeah? Some of us can never use it, yeah? Because of karma, no. we can use it for 30 years full strength and then, I mean, we have to wait until the body completely, you know, dies down, yeah? For 40 years or 50 years, yeah? yeah. And some of us are close, yeah? Some of us are not so close. <laughs> hmm? yeah. That is the life of a human bo body, yeah? I mean, other realms, you know, in the Deva realms, you just appear and disappear, yeah? You don't have to program anything, yeah? <clears throat> they use the fine material body, yeah? Animal realm and human realm is there where you have to program, yeah? But the animal realm is quite quick, yeah? Most of the time we, st yeah, we spend with learning to think properly, yeah? Learning to write, learning to think, learning to read, yeah? <clears throat> to be able to use language. That's human life. And next time you're born, what do you do? Yeah? Same thing. When you're born as a human being, 15 years programming, 30 years, yeah? Being able to use it, and 40 years, you know, oh, this, ah, oh, oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> Waiting to die. Yeah? No, don't believe it. Look at your life, yeah? I mean, the elders know, yeah? The elder know, yeah? Huh? People who are over 50 know it already, yeah? <clears throat> doesn't get better with age, oh? The body doesn't become better with age, oh? Every wine gets better with age, yeah? But the body <laughs> <laughs> But not the body, yeah? Huh? <clears throat> and in the, in the end, you know, I mean, the breath stops, you know, and we die, you know? And... We can't get enough of the body, so we want to have another body, yeah? Huh? And probably have to wait a little while, yeah? A few hundred years or a few thousand years, yeah, until we come back as a human being, and then we do the same thing, yeah? And in this life, you know, we, we are merchant, you know, in the next life we are farmer, and, uh, and, and so on, and so on. And most of our lives we actually have been soldiers, yeah? In this war, that war, yeah? I mean, look at the history of this world and, and then you know, most of the time of the history was war, yeah? yeah? Only, you know, only in the last 50, 50 or 60 years, yeah, there, were, there were not so many wars going on, yeah? At least not in Asia, yeah? <clears throat> well, what, what, what do you want to become in your next life, yeah? Think about it. A teacher, a doctor, a scientist, the president. <laughs> Don't think this is fun. <laughs> he has to, to bear a lot of responsibility. And just like any teacher has to bear responsibility. It's not fun to teach people, yeah? <clears throat> but that is human life, you know? So just know it, yeah? Understand it. Reflect about it, yeah? And then think what you're doing, yeah? What are you doing with this human life, yeah? Are you, yeah? Are you actually, you know, what is called a homo sapiens? You know what a homo sapiens is, yeah? A human being, yeah? Actually, you know, the highest form, yeah? That's what the human think it's the highest form, but the devas don't think it's the highest form, yeah? <clears throat> yeah? What is, what, what, what does a human being, you know, differentiate from, from an animal? How do we differentiate ourselves from an animal? Anybody, any ideas? No, they, they also have a brain. Even the bird has a brain. I mean, we can think. We can think, yeah. 
I mean, they can think in a certain way as well. No. What differentiates ourselves? Yeah. We use to. Yeah. No, reflect. Know what we're doing, why we are doing, what the results of our doings are. That what makes us humans. Yeah. Thinking goes in the right direction, but reflection is that what actually makes us human. Yeah. And how often do we do it? Not really. <laughs> That was the very good answer. <laughs> huh? We just run after our desires, isn't that? Huh? We want something, then we run after that. We don't want something, then we try to avoid it. Yeah. So how how do we differentiate ourselves from animals? Yeah. If they see danger, they also avoid it. Yeah. If they see food, they go for it. Yeah. So can we call ourselves human beings? Huh? What do you think? Huh? We call. Yeah. We think we are. Yeah. But when do we reflect? Yeah. Actually, we are much more like zombies. Yeah. You know what zombies are. <laughs> next next time, you know. I, I'm not joking, you know. Of course, sophisticated zombies, yeah? I'm not joking. Next time you go to a big shopping mall, yeah, just sit down there and, you know, drink a coffee and watch the people. Yeah? <laughs> and you see a lot of zombies running after their newest handbags, newest shoes, you know, newest dresses and, and so on. Or, or the men running after, you know, running after a new car and new stereo and new handphone and so on, yeah? They don't see life. They don't see right. No? Watch it, observe it, yeah, and you know, yeah, and you're not much different from it, yeah. <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> so, in order to get human beings, yeah, we have to reflect, yeah? we have to ask ourselves, you know, at least a few times a day, what the hell am I doing, yeah, and then stop doing it, you know, and reflect, why am I doing it, yeah, what is, what is the cause, yeah. And the cause for all our doings is some sort of boredom, restlessness, or dukkha. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, do we need it? Yeah. I mean, if we don't know, you know, and then we think about what kind of effect will it have, or what do what kind of effect do we expect from it? Yeah. Because that is, you know, huh? how often, you know, do we think if we do something and we want to get something from it? Yeah. And how often did we get it actually? In, Hardly any time. Yeah? Huh? We do something, you know, in order to get something, yeah. But because we don't reflect, yeah, we don't know. And we always run after the same things, yeah. Because there's some voice in us, you know, that promises us if you do this, you get happy. If you do that, you get happy, yeah. <clears throat> if you do this, you get a job, you know, if you do that, you know, you become rich, yeah. And how often did it happen? Not very often. Huh? When we are honest, yeah? yeah. So, do it, you know. If we do the reflection, at least the third time we do the same thing and we don't get the expected results, yeah, then we should stop doing it, yeah. <clears throat> no, that would be that would be that would make us a little bit wise, yeah. Wisdom, yeah. Wisdom is nothing that we can learn in books, yeah. Knowledge is that what we can learn in books, yeah? But knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom comes through experience, and, and all the older people know, yeah? We have can, gone through so many things in our lives, yeah? Through so many experiences, yeah? That, that we can deal with a lot of different things that the younger generation can't deal with it anymore, yeah? Or not yet, yeah? And that is called common wisdom, yeah? Wisdom comes through experience, you know? Wisdom doesn't come through knowledge, yeah? But nowadays, what, what do the companies do? Yeah, They chuck out the old people, the experienced people, and put in the new people that have lots of knowledge. Yeah, That's why they all, you know, sooner or later will fail. Yeah? I mean, wisdom was driving the companies for 200 and 300 years. Yeah? <clears throat> and they didn't, they didn't want to get rid of the experienced workers, you know, who know how to do it. Yeah? 
But something has changed, you know. We became more greedy. We want more money. We want faster money, faster money, faster money, yeah. I mean, the turnout, you know. Wisdom is also, you know, to plan ahead, yeah. To see what, what is going, what we're going to do within five years, you know, what is going to be worthwhile, yeah. Now it has to turn out in the next month, yeah. If we don't get enough money in the next month, we do something else, yeah. <clears throat> That's not wisdom, yeah. And we need wisdom, yeah. When you look, you know, when you look at the four noble truths, you know, what is the first noble truth? I already talked about dukkha, yeah? And I only mentioned the dukkha of the body, yeah? That's already a lot, yeah? Huh? Now look at the dukkha of the heart, yeah? When we are dissatisfied, you know, when we are bored, when we are restless, this is all dukkha of the heart, yeah? <clears throat> when we are unhappy, yeah? When we feel lonely, when we are afraid, when we are worried, that's all dukkha, yeah? And who doesn't worry here, yeah? He worries about the future that has not come, yeah? And he worries about the past, you know, where he did something wrong that cannot be corrected. All useless things, yeah? Has worry ever brought you back something that you, that you lost? Yeah? What, what actually helps, you know, is action, yeah? Action, you know, can help or words can help, yeah? But worries don't help. But we worry a lot, yeah? yeah? Do some of the older remember, you know? And there was a song, you know, in the 70s or 80s. Huh? Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why do we worry? Why do we put that on ourselves, yeah? The next time you see worry, you know, tell it, go away, yeah? Whatever will come, will come anyway, if I worry or not worry, yeah? <clears throat> Good things might happen or bad things might happen, yeah? We don't have to worry about bad things might happen, they will happen, yeah? <laughs> so the, the, second, the second noble truth is um, the cause, you know, the cause for our dukkha, yeah? What is the cause for our dukkha? The desire. We're not happy with the things the way they are. Yeah? If you're happy with the way things are, we have no dukkha. If it's hot, we are happy. If it's cold, it's happy. Yeah? If it rains, we are happy. If the sun shines, we are happy. Yeah? Huh? If you have lots of money, we are happy. If you don't have any money, we are happy. Yeah? If you have good food, we are happy. If you don't have good food, we are happy. Yeah? But we are not satisfied. Yeah? Huh? And everybody knows it. Yeah? Especially women know it, you know, and when they look in the mirror, mirror yeah, they are not satisfied. The nature, <laughs> <laughs> they need to change their looks, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, today I need to go to the hairdresser, tomorrow I need to buy a new, yeah, uh, new dress, you know, or whatever, yeah. And the men are also not happy, yeah. They see the neighbor has a new car, you know, they need a new car as well, yeah. Hmm? Oh, he has a better car than me, yeah? Huh? I can't live with that, yeah? So, we are, we are constantly dissatisfied, yeah? <clears throat> and that is the cause for our dukkha. Hmm? And then the third noble truth is there is an end of dukkha. Yeah? I just want to mention it, you know, and the fourth noble truth is that the path that leads to the end of dukkha. Yeah? And the path that leads to the end of dukkha is sila, yeah? You remember? Five precepts, yeah? Samadhi, yeah? Samadhi is the ability to concentrate and to develop sati. Yeah? Sati is very important. Sati is this awareness that knows. Yeah? For instance, it knows that there is a thought. Yeah? It knows that there is a feeling. Yeah? It knows that there is a memory coming up. Yeah? It knows that there is consciousness or something has come into the sense contacts. Yeah? And it knows that we have a body. Yeah? When do we know we have a body? When the body doesn't work anymore, yeah? When the body gets sick, then we know we have a body, yeah? <laughs> or when we start to meditate, you know, and try to sit in samadhi for 15 minutes, yeah? Then we also know we have a body. <laughs> <laughs> then we realize, hey, yeah, we have a body, yeah? Because it hurts here, it, it's, there is pain, there is pain, there is pain, yeah? Or there is this sensation, there is that sensation, yeah? That's when we realize we have a body. Otherwise, we just use the body, yeah? Just like we use our car, yeah? We just get into it, you know, I mean, we turn it on, you know, and we drive, yeah? 
we, we only get upset, you know, when it doesn't start, yeah, or when it breaks down, yeah. But what we do, you know, we bring it to a repair shop, yeah. Just like we bring our body to a repair shop, it's called the doctor or the hospital. Yeah. Stitch it up again, you know. Huh? Remove this, you know, or remove that, or ex uh, exchange this or exchange that, you know. What, what is the difference, you know, from this body to a car? Huh? One thing we call doctor, the other thing we call technician. But they do the same thing, yeah? They diagnose, you know, the car, you know, and see, okay, this, this is the faulty part, you know, they replace the faulty part, and then it works again, yeah? And the doctor does the same thing, you know? He diagnoses us, you know, and says, okay, this is the faulty part, yeah? If it needs to be replaced, you know, or if it just needs some medicine, yeah? No? So who inhabits the body? What did I say in the beginning? What was it? Who is the owner of the body? Who trains the body? Uh, already forgotten. Yeah? I mean, <laughs> I said the heart or the chitta. Huh? You remember? Yeah? <clears throat> the chitta. It is a very essential part. Yeah? Because the chitta is that, you know, goes from, yeah, just like the driver in a car, you know, when the car breaks down and it cannot be repaired, he goes and buys a new car. So when the cheetah sees the body cannot be used anymore, it tries to find a new body. Yeah? And depending on its money or its merit, you know, it can get a new body or it has to go down to, to certain realms of hell yeah? or in the ghost realm or wherever. Yeah? Or it might go up in the heavenly realms yeah? before it can get a new human body. Yeah? Hmm? So remember this, you're not the body. I mean, think about, you know, think about the simile. Huh? If you were born in a car huh? and you die in the car, you just drive the car, yeah? you never get out of the car. Huh? You believe you are the car. How can you not believe you are the car? Huh? You never got out of the car. You're born in the car, you die in the car, and you never get out of the car. How can you not believe you are the car? Huh? And that's the same with the body. We are born in this body. We die in this body. We never get out of the body. So we believe we are this body. Hmm? Huh? But that's actually this chitta. Yeah? The body doesn't program in itself. Yeah? The chitta programs it. Yeah? And you all know these programs. Yeah? Huh? When I need my... When I meet my spouse, you know, I react like this or I behave like this. When I meet my grandfather, I react like this or behave like this. When I meet my father, you know, or my mother, yeah, or my mother-in-law, yeah, or my father-in-law, yeah. When I meet my boss, I always behave differently. Programs, yeah, running. Yeah? Even if we think, you know, this time, you know, let me be different, yeah. The moment we see our grandfather or our father, we react like a child. Yeah? Yeah? So it's a program that's running. No? Yeah? And, and, and you know, you know, uh, you know the synonym for Nibbana? The unconditioned. And you know what a program is? Conditioning. If I meet this person, I behave like that. If, then, else, yeah? Hmm? That's conditioning. That's programming. That's the ess essence of any kind of programming language. If, then, else, yeah? So, we are conditioned. That's why we behave the way we are, yeah? When we meet a new person, you know, we are completely different than when, when we need, you know, an old friend, yeah? When we meet, you know, our, our wife that we have been, or our husband that we have been with for 20 years or 30 years, we behave always the same, yeah? <laughs> huh? Huh? Yeah, you see it, you know? And then you meet your friend, you know, and you behave differently, yeah? No? When, then you meet your boss and you behave even differently, yeah? So, 
conditioning is if I see this person, then I behave like this. If I see that person, I behave like this. If I, if I meet this occasion, you know, or situation, then I behave like that. And, and you also already know this programming takes place, you know, when you try to meet somebody that you have not met or that you, that you have problems with, your boss, your boss calls you tomorrow, you come in, and then we start to program ourselves. What am I going to say? How am I going to behave? Yeah? Yeah? And then you come in, you know, and you behave in the wrong way because, I mean, you programmed yourself and you did, yeah, you, you weren't aware of the situation. Maybe he wanted to gr congratulate you, yeah? Huh? But you, you thought, you know, he's going to punish you. <laughs> huh? Anyway, yeah? So, that's the second time we are not human beings, yeah? We are programmed. We are robots, yeah? We don't like to hear that. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, because we think we are human beings. Yeah, we are very evolved human beings. Yeah? But look at your own life, you know, <clears throat> and look at the people, you know. Maybe people who get in Dhamma, you know, are, are starting to loosen up a little bit, you know, the conditioning. But yeah, look at the people, you know, you work with, yeah. If, if one of the programs doesn't work out anymore, yeah, if they can't live with society or if they can't live with the relatives anymore, they, then they go to the psychiatrist. No? Huh? You know, people who go to the psychiatrist, help me, help me to live, you know, in a, in a normal fashion. Help me to live, you know, to be able to cope with the world as it is, yeah? So the, psych the psychiatrist, you know, helps to change the program of this person. And so that he can, you know, adjust to the situation. Yeah? But still, you know, he's a robot, yeah? A very sophisticated robot, yeah, no problem, yeah? Very advanced, yeah? I mean, the AI, you know, artificial intelligence that we put nowadays in the machine has nothing to do with our artificial intelligence, yeah? We are really much more advanced, yeah? But we're still, yeah, programmed, conditioned, yeah? And that's what the Lord Buddha said, you know? We are conditioned, yeah? And this conditioning makes us do certain things that we sometimes re really don't like, yeah? But still, you know, next situation we be still behave the way, yeah? Because we don't use this reflection, yeah? We don't get wiser, yeah? We don't learn from our mistakes. We do the same mistakes over and over again, yeah? And that's why we stay stupid, yeah? If we learn from our mistakes, yeah? Then we become wiser, yeah? And if people there, you know, don't want to make mistakes, yeah, they will stay stupid all their life, yeah? Because the only time when we can get wise, you know, is when we learn from our mistakes, yeah? Mistakes, yeah? Actually, there's also this Latin, yeah? errare humanum est, yeah? Huh? To, err, to err is human, yeah? And if we don't, you know, if we don't make mistakes, we don't learn, yeah? No? But if you don't learn from our mistakes, you know, that is stupidity. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? But if we make a lot of mistakes and learn from these mistakes, we become wise and we become experienced. Yeah? And that's what normally happens, you know, with older people. Yeah? Should happen. Yeah? <clears throat> Just think about 200 years ago. You know who was the head of the village? The youngest? Or the oldest? Yeah? The oldest, and that was normally, you know, the wisest person, yeah? And how do we respect now older people? Huh? Now I ask the younger people. Yeah? Huh? In Malaysia, we have the oldest leader in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the old, oldest leader in the world? Yeah, with the oldest among, compared to other, other countries. You know, to, compared to other countries, yeah. yeah. But before that... <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't you just change your leader? <laughs> but normally it used to be like that, yeah. But look in the company, it's not anymore, yeah. Look, you know, it it does change, yeah. We used to to elect, you know, the elders, you know. That's why they were called elders, you know, to 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 be responsible for for what is happening within a village, yeah. <clears throat> And maybe in the world. Areas of, of, of Malaysia, it still happened. Yeah? So wisdom, wisdom comes through experience, through learning, yeah? through learning through our mistakes. Yeah? We don't learn, yeah? we just stay stupid. Yeah? 
But nowadays, you know, with all, all what we need is knowledge, 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 yeah. People don't learn, you know, anymore how to, yeah, how to be wise, you know. People are afraid to make mistakes, yeah. And that's why we stay stupid, yeah. <clears throat> so where, where was I? You know, Sila Samadhi Panya, yeah, the way out, yeah. I was, I was got stuck with samadhi, you know, and 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 sati, the the awareness, you know, that knows that they are, that knows the five khandas, yeah. What are the five khandas? Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara. Yeah. So Rupa is the body. Vedana is feeling. Yeah. Thought, associate, uh, memory, association, thought, and consciousness. Yeah. And when you define yourself, you define yourself in the realm of the five khandas. Yeah. I'm like this, yeah. Or I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm, yeah. Huh? I'm a good person, I'm a bad person. Nobody says that, yeah, but yeah, everybody's a good person, yeah. No? We're all good people, yeah, don't we? Yeah. If you're all good people, you wouldn't be born as human beings, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any being, you know, that is born in any kind of realm, even in the highest realm, Heavenly realm, yeah, has good and evil, yeah. But we don't want to realize our evil, yeah. So every being, yeah. But of course, you know, in the heavenly realm, you know, they have more good than evil, yeah. On the human realm, they have about the same, yeah. yeah? As much good as they have evil, and some of us are more evil than others, you know, and some of us are more good than others, you know, but we all have good and evil, yeah. If you realize that, we can't look down on another person just because he does something bad. Yeah? We do bad all the time. Yeah? So realize that. Yeah? And then we can respect everybody. Yeah? Even, the, even the most stupid person. Yeah? Or even the most bad person or most evil person. Yeah? We can respect him as a human being. Yeah? He had, actually, he made it to become a human being, yeah? So he must have kept his precept sometimes, yeah? yeah? We don't have to respect what he's doing, yeah? We don't have to, to say, you know, killing people, you know, or murdering people is good, yeah? But, you know, being that he is a human being, we can be respectful of that, yeah? We, we, we always mix these things together. They have nothing to do with each other. And the Lord Buddha actually described it in one of the suttas, yeah? yeah? I mean, if you can't find anything good in a person, you know, at least, you know, because he's a person, you know, he's good. Yeah? I mean, we can respect him, yeah? yeah? <clears throat> so they had the same problems 2,500 years ago. So I, it's not new, yeah? <clears throat> so samadhi is the concentration on one point, yeah? If you've done meditation before, you sit down, you know, I mean, you close your eyes and you put your attention on the, on the tip of the nose, yeah, or around here, you know, and feel the breath going in, breath going out, yeah. And that's what we concentrate on. Or the other method is the mental repetition of the word Buddha or Dhamma or Sanko, yeah. And any, any kind of thought you know, that comes into the mind, we replace with the Buddha or we replace with the attention on the breath until the mind gets calm. When the mind gets calm, you know, it stops thinking. When the mind gets calm, it stops memorizing, yeah? And then, for the first time in our life, we feel happy. We feel contented. We don't want anything, yeah? And uh, alone this experience, not wanting anything, I mean, it's, it's amazing in itself, yeah? It is, yeah, we call this, you know, pocha samadhi, yeah? When we come out, we are refreshed and we are concentrated, yeah? So whenever you entered it and you come out and you're tired, then this was, this was not samadhi, yeah? It was still, you know, I mean, still fighting, you know, fighting the mind that was constantly going out, yeah? So how we do it like, yeah, I mean, I always call it, we, we learn to walk, you know? So we learn to meditate, yeah? We get up, fall over, we get up, fall over, we get up, fall over. Mind goes out, we bring it back. The mind goes out, we bring it back. The mind goes out, we bring it back. And it stays there, yeah? Once it stays there, the mind gets calm, yeah? and it be, and it becomes happy. Yeah? And then look at look at you. What are what are you doing to get happy? Have more money? Yeah. Have a better car? Have a have a bigger house? Yeah. 
That's what what your kind of happiness is, and how long does this happiness last? Yeah, and especially where does the happiness arise? In the car, in the house, in the dress, in the handbag, in the shoes? Huh? Yeah, here in the heart. Huh? So why do why don't we look here in the heart? You know? Huh? If we know it's already arising here in the heart, yeah, then we can look for it. Yeah, and the way to look for it is this: you know, training samadhi. Yeah, training upachara samadhi. Yeah. Just putting our attention onto the one point, yeah. <clears throat> be it the be it the tip of the nose or be it the Buddha, yeah. That's all, yeah. And it's difficult. It's so difficult. And the younger the generation is, the more difficult it is, yeah, because they are much more distracted with their smartphones. They have no, they have no samadhi. They cannot even concentrate for one second on one thing, yeah. The older generation, well, we didn't live with the smartphones, yeah. We weren't brought up with smartphones, huh? We 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 had maybe we had a phone, you know, in the village, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was one phone in the village, you know. And if we weren't there, you know, I mean, we didn't know, yeah. Now we have to fo- have the phone, you know, in our pocket, yeah. You have to know every moment, you know, when when somebody is calling, yeah. That's stressful, yeah, and that is distracting as well. Yeah? And then at that time, you know, if a relative from the neighboring village wanted to visit us, yeah, they just came by. They didn't call before because we didn't have phone. <laughs> 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 yeah? They just came by in and see if we were there. If we were there, happy, you know. If they, if we weren't there, you know, okay. And we did the same thing. Yeah, our life was much more simple. Yeah. Nowadays it is, you know, it is more and more stressed, you know, because I mean we have been constantly 24 hours, yeah, 24 seven, yeah, reachable, yeah, and that not only that, you know, that you know our phone rings, yeah, but also you know all these SMS, you know, I mean this WhatsApp and Line and Facebook and so on, yeah. <laughs> we constantly look. Ah, did somebody comment on my post? You know. <laughs> What did they write? Oh, that was a hateful comment. You know, I have to write something against it. I mean, what kind of stress is that? You know, and it's actually, you know, killing a lot of time, yeah? Because it's not doing something useful, yeah? But we think we live, you know, when we do this. We live when we react to towards these things. No. No, we live, you know, when we are actually in the present moment, yeah? When there is no more thoughts, no more memories, you know? That's when we actually live. Yeah? Then that's when we actually are aware of what is going on in our heart. And that's when we actually understand what is going on in our heart. Yeah? That's where we could learn, you know, where all this sadness, where all this tiredness and all these things, all this pain is coming from. But we don't want to. Yeah? Yeah? If we want to know, we go to a psychiatrist and ask him why. <laughs> And nowadays, you know, we don't need to go to the, uh, to, only to the psychiatrist, we just go to a Buddhist monk. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Buddhist psychiatry, yeah? They don't tell us the cause of our problem. The cause of our problems is desire, yeah? And the way, you know, to end desire, you know, is the false noble truth, yeah? First of all, get our mind still, you know, until we see the happiness and contentment in the samadhi, yeah? And then use it, you know, to uh, to investigate the things that we believe we are. And the first thing, you know, when you look in the morning in the mirror, the first thing that you believe you are is what you see in the mirror, yeah? your body. Uh, you don't see your heart in the mirror. <laughs> Would be nice sometimes, yeah, <laughs> to see what is going on in there, yeah? But the heart, you know, the chitta is, you know, deep down, yeah? <clears throat> So that's what we believe in. That's what we are going to investigate. Yeah? Because investigation, and just like, like I mentioned before, yeah? I mean, that we are not the body. Yeah? The chit- chitta and the body are two different things. Yeah? And if you remember what I said, you know, in the five khandas, the five groups, what are they? Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyana. Did, you hear, did anybody of you hear chitta? So the chitta is not one of the five khandas, yeah? But the chitta inhabits this body or inhabits or takes hold of the five khandas and believes, you know, it is the five khandas, yeah? And that's why we have to 
get detached from these five khandhas to see, you know, what the chitta actually is, yeah? And the first time we see what the chitta more or less is, you know, when we are without thoughts and memories, yeah? Because then there is no definition, yeah? You don't think it's good or bad, yeah? You don't want this, you don't want that, you know, you're actually free for a moment, yeah? For the moment you're, for, for the time you're being in Upachara Samadhi, that's when you're free, yeah? <clears throat> And that's what we need, you know, as a motivation, yeah, to make the, you know, to make the difficult part, you know, to, to get detached from this body. Yeah? Mm-hmm. yeah. Understood? Yeah. And then we can, we can even go further down, you know, but I'm not going to explain that today. Yeah? People getting restless slow, slowly, yeah? yeah? We want to sleep, we want to go to sleep, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> when you when you think about the ten fetters that bind us to the hamster wheel, yeah? The first fetter is the fetter of doubt, yeah? Doubt that there is heaven, doubt that there is hell, doubt that there are beings in heaven, doubt that there are beings in hell, doubt that there is karma and doubt that there are results of karma, yeah? That's the first fetter, yeah? The second fetter is keeping the precepts, not keeping the precepts. Sila pata paramasa. Sila? You remember Sila, five precepts? Yeah. Has nothing to do with rites and rituals. Sila is not rites and rituals. Yeah. Sila is precepts. Yeah. Keeping the precepts, not keeping the precepts, keeping the precepts, not keeping the precepts. That is Sila Pata Paramas and the second fetter. Yeah. And the third fetter is yeah, believing that we are the body. Yeah, get out of the body, look at the body. Eh, that looks familiar. Yeah. I've seen it somewhere, yeah. And then you know you're not the body. Yeah? Yeah? And that leads to, actually it leads to this, yeah, opening the door of the hamster wheel, being able to get out. Yeah? And the rest is, you know, investigation of the body and then investigation of the mind khandas, yeah. <clears throat> But the body investigation itself, yeah, leads to the state of anakami. Remember? Non-returner. Because greed and hatred are rooted in the body. Our desires are rooted in this body. Our strong desires are rooted in this body. Yeah? And the body and the sensation, the feelings, and so on. Yeah? Bodily feelings, yeah. So, now, ask yourself what you want, you know, and put your goal up, you know, what you want to do with the rest of your life, yeah? And you heard, yeah? I, all what I can show you are the different ways, yeah? If you want to go, go up to heaven, yeah, there is a way, yeah? <clears throat> Keep the five precepts, yeah? Develop a lot of generosity, respect, and gratitude, then you can go up to heaven, yeah? If it's not enough, you come back as a human being, yeah? Huh? If you want to get out of the hamster wheel, yeah, I just showed you, yeah? That's for, for the moment all, yeah? yeah? Not dana, yeah? Dana is important, yeah? Generosity is important, but it's not enough, yeah? Okay, understood? Forest Dhamma. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're all so kind, you're all so nice, you all go to up to heaven, yeah. Just give me enough, give me, give me, give me, give me, yeah. <laughs> and then you will all go to heaven. I can't tell lies. Huh? Because that's not the truth, you know. When I look at most of the people, huh? I see them already at the door of hell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> So make something out of your life. It is your responsibility, you know. Don't blame me because that, yeah, I told you, yeah. So you can't blame me, yeah. Nobody told us when we don't keep the five precepts that we go down to hell, yeah. <laughs> I told you, yeah. And I also told you, you know, what you can do, you know, to have a better life in the next life, yeah. Do the things that you want, yeah, now. Give the things, you know, that you want to receive, yeah. Or plant the rice that you want to eat next year, yeah. Huh? That's it, yeah. If you want to have a better life next life, you know, do the things, yeah. <clears throat> And if you want to get out of the hamster wheel, yeah, I mean, I showed you the way, yeah. I don't go into the de- de- detail because some of the people are already falling asleep, yeah. <laughs> And it's enough for today, yeah? I mean, if you have some pressing questions, you can ask them, yeah? <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? 
See, no questions there. <laughs> they're already they're already asleep, you know. You know? Put themselves on autopilot, yeah. I just have a question. Yeah. In order for us to develop wisdom, do we actually need to uh, from samadhi goes into vipassana? Not automatically. Yeah. Vipassana is vipassana. I mean, that's what a lot of people, you know, make a mistake. Yeah. Vipassana is vipassana, and 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 samatha is samatha. Vipassana is developing of of, of wisdom. Yeah. And what do we investigate? I, I mean, I just, you know, scratched it a little bit. You know, we investigate the five khandas, and the first khanda we investigate is this body. So when we investigate the body, yeah, then we look, we take one of the one of the 32 parts of the body, or the body as a whole, yeah, and put it in our mind until we see it with our inner eyes, yeah. And then we ask certain questions about the body, yeah. That is vipassana. And we don't change the object. Yeah, when we sit in vipassana we, for 45 minutes, then we have only one object. Yeah, be it the be it the lungs or be it the liver or be it the kidneys or be it the stomach. Yeah, or or be it the hair or be it the teeth. You know, we just look at it. You know, and then we ask the question. You know, what is the nature of it? You know, what happens to it when we put some fire on it? When we cut it up, how does it look? Yeah. And then the next time we do it with a different organ, how does it look? You know, then we compare these two organs, yeah, to the nature, you know, we see the nature of all these things, yeah. I mean, just look at your nails, yeah, where they're coming out of the skin. And the skin is very different than the nails, yeah. Or the hairs, yeah. Huh? Or make some very basic, you know, basic uh, <coughs> vipassana, yeah. Whatever goes into our body is nice and tasty. Whatever goes out of our body, yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. So this this body is nothing else than a chemical factory, you know, that turns everything that, that is beautiful into something that is disgusting. No. Yeah. I mean, that's the truth, isn't it? I mean, even look at your hair. Yeah. You go and wash your hair. Yeah. With soap, you know, and it feels nice, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, and then you have to clean, you know, you have to clean the shower, and in the drainage there's some some hair. You find it disgusting, huh? The moment it comes off our body, we find it disgusting. Yeah. Try next time, you know, when you cut your nails, yeah. Try to cut it and it, and have your your dinner ready next to it. <laughs> Or put some hair, you know, into the soup, you know, because you love your hair, yeah? When you look at the hair, you love it, you know? So why can't you put it into the soup, yeah? Or in the, into the meal? Why does it become disgusting? That is the question you should ask. Why does it become disgusting the moment it is off the body? Or even the, when the skin peels off, you know, we don't like to look at it, yeah? When the sweat comes out, we don't like to, to smell it, yeah? And the thing that we have 24 hours in our mouth, we call spittle, we, when we put it in, uh, in our hands, we don't want to lick it back up. Huh? These are the questions you should ask yourself. Yeah? What is so beautiful about this body? Huh? The moment you, do, you take away the skin, you, you don't want to look at it. Huh? Just take away the skin, yeah. Hmm? <clears throat> When you have a, you know, when you have a lover and take away the skin, you don't want to hug it, yeah. You don't want to kiss it, yeah. No, yeah, it's a mess of flesh and blood and so on. Yeah. You no, know, we don't want to see it, yeah. And actually, old, per, old people and young people just look the same. <laughs> There's no age and hardly any difference between men and 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 women, yeah. When you take off the skin, yeah, together with the hair, yeah. Huh? Where's the difference? Yeah? There's hardly any difference. Yeah? That's what you do with investigation. You take one object, yeah. Or you look at, you know, you look at the hair, you know, and then you see all aspects of the hair, yeah. Or, or you look at the teeth and see all aspects of the teeth, yeah. <clears throat> or you, you look at the inner organs, or you look at the whole body, yeah, and see it, yeah. And you stay. 
Just like with sam samatha, you stay on the breath, and then you stay with this one object for 40 minutes, yeah? Or 45 minutes, whatever time you have done, yeah? And then you start to investigate, start to ask the question. Yeah? Why is it beautiful as long as it is on the body? Why does, when it falls off, why is it disgusting? Yeah? But don't listen to any answers that come in. Yeah? We, don't, we are not interested. Yeah? Yeah? We want to know, we want to heart the seed. Yeah? Because meditation or practice is all about teaching the heart. Yeah? Every one of you knows it is so easy, you know, if you, have, if you have a habit, you know, that is not really satisfactory and want to give it up, yeah? It is very difficult to give it up, yeah? The heart constantly longs for it, yeah? But if the heart understands that it does something, you know, bad to itself, you know, it instantly gives up, yeah? I mean, we have our hand in the fire, yeah? It is on fire and it is burning hot, but we look the other way. So we see somebody come, oh, that's the cause of our fire, that's the cause of our heartburn, that's the cause, yeah? But when we turn, you know, when we slowly turn the heart towards, you know, the hand that is on fire, automatically we don't have to teach the heart to let go, yeah? The heart is the only thing that knows how to let go, yeah? We try to let go so often and it doesn't work, yeah? yeah? Because we can't let go. The only thing that we can is not to follow the desires. That's what we can do. Not to follow the desires that come in, yeah? No, bad desires or good desires, yeah? But the heart has to understand what it does. That's why we need this reflection, huh? Without this reflection, the heart will never understand what it does, yeah? We just go for whatever, you know, the heart tells us, yeah? But once the heart sees that what it does, you know, it's not really helpful or actually quite the opposite of what we expect it to be, then the heart lets go. It doesn't wish to do anything anymore. Yeah? That's a way how to cure problem. Yeah? <clears throat> not to reprogram yourself, you know, to understand. Yeah? Okay? Understood? Any other questions? Yeah? Ajahn, uh, you mentioned about this chitta uh, and not in regards to our heart. Our understanding is that the chitta is the emotional mind and mama is the thinking mind. Can Ajahn explain to us further on this? Chitta and the heart are very, are very often used as synonyms. Yeah? I mean, the heart, normally when we, when we talk about the heart in the English language, you know, we have the emotional heart and the rational heart. Yeah? So there are two aspects. Yeah? When we look at the chitta, it has lots of different facets, yeah? Think about it as a diamond, yeah? And, it, it, you know, every diamond is different, yeah? I mean, you can look at, you know, it has the facet of greed, it has the facet of delusion, it has the facet of anger, it has the facet of rationality, it has the facet of wisdom, it has the facet of sati. You know, it has lots of different facets. Some are underdeveloped, others are developed, yeah? So when you look at this, you know, I mean, that is the chitta, yeah? But even when you look at a diamond, you don't see the essence of the chitta. You have to remove the facets in order to see the essence of the chitta. Yeah? So some, some say, you know, and it is not wrong, you know, that the kilesas, you know, <clears throat> are in our heart, you know, and the kilesas are greed, hatred, and delusion, and avicca, yeah? They occupy our heart, and they tell us what to do, yeah? I like this, yeah, and then, yeah, you do it, yeah. Hmm? I want this, you know, and then you say, yes, my Lord, I want this, yeah. I'm tired, yes, my Lord, I go to sleep, yeah. Hmm? I need more money, yes, my Lord, I'm working harder. <laughs> huh? So these are the facets of the, the chitta. The pure chitta is the chitta of the arahant, yeah, that has removed all the kilesas, yeah. That is the pure chitta. But we all have the, you know, the, uh, the chitta that is occupied by our slave master. I call it slave master because we don't like to be slaves, yeah? But we are constantly slaves. Yes, my lord, yes, my lord. I want this, yes, my lord. I need this, yes, my lord, yeah? I'm tired, yes, my lord. I'm hungry, yes, my lord. I go to eat, yeah? We always say, like, yes, 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 yeah? We never say, no. And actually, when you try it out, you know, one time, the killers tell you, I want to go eat, and you say no. 
<laughs> Have you ever tried that? Huh? Oh, I want to go to sleep? No. I want to meditate. Huh? Try that out, yeah? I mean, you're not powerless, but you have given all the power to the avicca. You have to give all the power to the kilesas. And now the fight, you know, to get the power back, you know, to the real CEO, yeah? <laughs> Because the CEO at the moment is fast asleep, you know, and whatever the kilesas, whatever paper the kilesas bring, you know, it just signs it in its sleep. Yes, my lord, yes, my lord, yes, my lord, yes, my lord, yeah? But the moment we do some reflection, I mean, ah, maybe this is not good. No, yeah? But then the kilesas get angry. <laughs> Because they are used to say, yeah? used to ask, you know, to say yes, 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 yeah? <clears throat> okay. Understood, yeah? So. It's already late, isn't it? Yeah? What time is it? Yeah, if there are no more questions. Have you slept well, though? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Yes? No. It was a nice sleep, yeah? <laughs> no, it wasn't a nice sleep. You know, what we heard today, you know, was not very comfortable, huh? <laughs> yeah? And the Dhamma from the forest has never been comfortable, yeah? It's the truth, yeah? I'm not here to, you know, to, 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 to tell any lies. Yeah, you're all good people, you all go to heaven. I'm not here for that. Yeah? I'm here to tell the truth. Yeah, That's what I'm for. You know, the Lord Buddha never told any lies. Yeah, yeah? All, you know, always, you know, caution the people, you know, to be, yeah? to be cautious, yeah? to have sati, to be aware of what they are doing, why they are doing it, and what the results of it are. Yeah? Okay, so, now, out of breath. <laughs> Yeah, just grab, just uh, pay your respect and then go. <laughs> I mean, reading from these papers, you know, I mean, it's boring. <laughs>